Yeah, we've, we've got a lot of ports in Washington, so hopefully we'll get a little something for each one of them. But today we are focusing on Tacoma. Uh, I want to paint a little picture for you. When we're talking about these LN, this LNG plant uh, that's proposed for the port of Tacoma, it is 12 feet shorter than the Tacoma Dome. So at 140 feet. And then it's described as being slightly narrower than it is tall. So 120, 120 feet wide diameter, maybe. I didn't get the exact number. Then, uh, well, it stores uh, liquid natural gas, so liquefied. And uh, so at a very, it's cooled to a very uh, cool temperature to the point where it liquefies and it will hold 8 million gallons of this liquid natural gas, then should that gas ever warm up and expand, uh, it will, it can fill the Tacoma Dome uh, more than 30 times over. So uh, it's, it's a big deal. We've got Tacoma Dome size bombs here. Uh, uh, moving on to slide 22, we've got some interesting dynamics uh, created by gerrymandering in, in the area. Most of Tacoma is covered by Congressional District 6, but the port and northeast Tacoma are covered by uh, Congressional District 9. Uh, with Congressional District 10 coming up very close, uh, and 8 also, and with those, the Puyallup tribal lands, I believe, cross over into CD8 and CD10. So uh, in the Port of Tacoma, I should start say with that the Port of Tacoma is uh, tribal land, uh, Puyallup tribal land. And uh, I should also say that this, is, this, this report is a headlines only report. We'll get into greater detail uh, with further reports down the road. But uh, this is just to wake us all up to this. So I marked, uh, so in the middle of this map is the port with the uh, LNG uh, with an arrow and then the Northwest Detention Center, which is a private uh, immigration prison is also down at the port. And so uh, this is, um, there's a lot going on in the port of Tacoma. So I also want to give a little insight as to how we got to this point with fossil fuels at the port. Um, on slide 23, we've got uh, Governor Inslee, our green governor. He was, uh, he and his team were integral in getting the port, uh, uh, proposing methanol at the port, which we successfully fought. Uh, so be on the lookout for Governor Inslee. Then we've got former governor Gary Locke, who is also former ambassador to China, uh, who's now working for the methanol, uh, or was as of December 16th, or December 2016, working for uh, the methanol plant. Uh, and then we've got Norm Dix, our former congressional uh, US, CD6 uh, US representative who is now a liquid, an LNG lobbyist. So he's active in the situation right now. I saw him at a Tacoma City Council meeting uh, just a few weeks ago uh, in support of the LNG. Uh, and then we also have Fuse Washington, our progressive endorsement group that Washington relies heavily on. They endorsed environmentalists all over the state. But when it came to Tacoma endorsements, they endorsed with only one exception, everyone uh, who supported LNG. So uh, I feel like Tacoma is becoming the bedpan of Washington and we can't let that happen. So um, on slide 24, our local newspaper via um, like editorials and uh, tweets of re by reporters and uh, has referred to local water protectors as nasty vitriolic and jerks so and despite all that the news you know at least this one reporter um still at least supports our right to have speak uh public spe uh time time for public 
discourse at council meetings because that is also under threat right now. They're trying to shut down our uh, public speaking time in our uh, city uh, council meetings. So it just gets better and better. <laughs> then um, uh, we've also had a tweet by uh, Sherry Tan, who is on the board of uh, Citizens for a Healthy Bay, one of our very important uh, environmental groups in Tacoma. And um, her tweet was, I wish they actually worked towards something positive, say promoting renewables and mass transit. Do they walk to work and live off the grid? That's, that's from a local environment, environmentalist, a powerful, like an influential one. Uh, dismissing the work of water protectors at the port of Tacoma. <laughs> so then um, we should also talk about uh, who's investing in this and what permits they have coming uh, and where, where they're at on this. So Puget Sound Energy, it sounds so local, but it's owned by Australia and Canada, at least uh, companies and affiliates of those countries. Then you know, the methanol plant we fought off, it was called Northwest Innovation Works. Northwest, I love it. This is greenwashing at the best. It's, it's a Chinese company. So uh, watch yourselves and we need to own it. Like we, we should be calling it uh, PSE Australia or uh, Innovation Works China. So own the language people. And then in considering uh, the permits, I have much to much detail to learn on this subject, but uh, as far as I can tell, um, the FEIS is uh, based on industry information that uh, might be understating the risk. Um, SEPA, I don't think has been done, and the building permits are incomplete, and yet they're building. Uh, there's some, uh, there's stories of, of t a tank already built. So um, the, I also have a lot to learn about the uh, tribal, uh, the tribal response to this, the tri um, their priorities in this. Um, I look forward to speaking with someone from the tribe to bring uh, their message about this. Um, so uh, we have a, this map here that shows the, uh, as Wikipedia, maps it out, the Puyallup Reservation, uh, and LNG and the immigration jail are just outside, outside of the, the Wikipedia official uh, lines on the map, but it's certainly within proximity enough to, for, for there to be more discourse before these kinds of things are allowed to exist or to be continued. So, uh, I stand with the Puyallup tribe against liquefied natural gas at the Port of Tacoma. And when we're talking about the Port of Tacoma, we need to think about what it is. It is the mouth of the Puyallup River that runs from glaciers on Mount Rainier. Uh, this is the, the landscape of my life and it, it, it moves me. Uh, and now where water meets uh, where river meets ocean, we have uh, toxicity. And uh, these are edge spaces where diversity bl blossoms. And so we're, we're harming the most diverse area of our water systems. Uh, it is one of a uh, very few deep water, uh, natural deep water ports. So when uh, people express concerns about uh, who's, if we block LNG, from our port, uh, that will harm business. I assure you, being a deep water port guarantees business and we can be picky. We do not have to settle. So uh, we'll move on to risks here. This is a super fun site twice over. There's a Occidental uh, super fun uh, site uh, on the next, uh, we have a map on the next slide and we'll come back to the risk slide if you don't mind. Um, you can find the links to this. Uh, well, you can contact us if they're not in our links, but because uh, I know this is hard to see on a screen. But the 
purples and pinks are and uh, kind of tans are the Superfund sites. Uh, they're buried toxicity. So there's risk of that being disturbed in earthquake. There's risk of that being disturbed in pounding pilings for new buildings. Uh, this is, is partially cleaned up, but really the cleanup is considered buried. It's buried, therefore it's cleaned up. So uh, back to the risks, we've got uh, volcanic eruption. The, uh, we have plenty of evidence that the lahars, the mudslides caused by the eruption of a volcano, our, vol our volcano, uh, come, can flow in whatever direction that the blast pushes it, but it comes down the Puyallup River often enough to think of it as a future risk. Then um, we've got earthquake, uh, and this the soil that this port shows, uh, or this uh, port is on, is prone to liquefaction. It will, it's a solid right now, but when you shake it, it'll just melt out from underneath your buildings. So uh, that should rule it out. Then if there's an earthquake risk, um, there's also a tsunami risk. And so we've got a lovely tsunami map uh, here that shows um, color variations. Again, not the best for a small screen, but you get the general idea. Uh, the yellow is about, I think it's a, a half a foot to two feet. And then the red is, um, I think, five feet. So there's a great risk. The LNG, I believe, sits on a site uh, is proposed for the site of a five foot uh, tsunami um, standing water tsunami. Uh, I don't, it's, I know it crests and it comes down five feet of water. So um, then we're at the lowest point of the, of our uh, Tacoma's land. So we have to consider sea rise as uh, global cha uh, climate change occurs. And then of course there's human accidents we can't, we're prone to them being human and I don't begrudge people their accidents, but this kind of environment poses too great a risk. Uh, and in that, the ICE, the immigration uh, detention center is, uh, there's no evacuation procedures for them. They are a hunkered down in an emergency uh, environment. So I, I'm, I, I can't abide by that. And evacuation, even for those who aren't told to hunker down, is nearly impossible. The ins and outs of the Port of Tacoma are few and far between and narrow. And uh, if if anything is, if any of it is uh, nature related, any of those emergencies, then those roadways are also compromised. So the, the risk is far too great for the so-called benefits of temporary jobs that uh, will exist with any growth at the port. So uh, those businesses that we can be busy, uh, picky about, they'll fill, they'll create jobs. And then the bridge to green energy benefit it, to me is a falsehood. The bridge to green energy is our existing fossil fuel infrastructure because it's a dying industry. We do not need to make further investments in it. We need to take these grand investments and gear them towards green energy infrastructure. So thank, thank you. you, Courtney. That was a wonderful description, brief description for so much going on there that we definitely want to uh, get back to that in a longer um, presentation and with, with, with people who are working on the ground there. So, wow. Yes. Thank you so very much for shining light on Tacoma. Thank you. Whew. Uh, were there any uh, questions uh, before we go see our all powerful Oz? No, no, no real questions. Just a lot of concern. Um, we've got a lot of people talking about like the Cali stuff going on in California and the fracking they go on, have going on down there along with all of the fault lines. So it looks like it's the whole West Coast, you know, this whole West Coast is getting fracked to hell, I guess you'd say. So we need to definitely keep our eyes on it and work together with, with other people in other states to continue this fight further, for sure. There's a lot of people worried about yeah. it. And we have to protest oh, this, not just on behalf of Tacoma, but on behalf of the whole uh, process that this 
entails. We've got the fracking, we've got the pipelines. Oh, there will be a new pipeline for this uh, uh, facility and it's going in under I-5. So that's not exciting at all. Um, and, uh, but we can't, we can't be complicit in the fracking outside of our environment uh, for a handful of jobs in our port. I mean, and then the risk, there's too much risk all along the pipeline. Right. 